Perspective influences how we act. Your perspective influences how you act. It, 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 it determines things. If you perceive something to be true, which unfortunately, perception is oftentimes reality. If you perceive something to be true, you're going to plan differently. Therefore, you're going to act differently. Let me give you an example. If you were going to go out to eat this afternoon, you would dress differently than if you were going to the gym or if you were going swimming. Because what you perceive to be true, you act different. So because I'm going to the beach, I'm going to wear something different than I would be going to the gym or going out to eat or coming to church. Your perception influences your purpose, and here's how. And here's how. I'm going to give it to you. The temporal or earthly practice, it's based on a, on a worldly perspective. And that is this. If it's all about the world, if it's all temporal, if it's all evolutionary, if it's all accidental, then we have no purpose. Because we weren't created for any specific purpose. And where the, where the word perspective comes in is if it's based on God's word, if it's based on the word, we know, we know that we have an eternal or heavenly perspective. And that heavenly perspective says this, that we were created. And if we were created, we're created for a purpose. If you view things through the world, you'll never have an actual purpose. Everything that we do will always be temporal. It'll always be earthly. It'll always be fleshly. It will always result in fleshly things, earthly things, temporal things, worldly things, which are no purpose. But if we look at things through God's word, we see, thing, we see things totally different. When we see things through God's word, we know that he created us. We didn't just evolve here by accident. We were put here on purpose. We weren't just an evolutionary accident. We were created on purpose. And we can find our purpose. And so oftentimes, here's what happens. We look for our purpose in the world. We try to find our purpose that we learn from God's word and we look for it in the world. And that will result you in nothing. It will result you in nothing because they keep looking and looking and can't find anything. And you know, ironically, when people actually begin to find their purpose, you know where they look? They look in the word. Because they find that we were created. And if we are created, we're created for a purpose. On purpose. And so where do we look for? Where do we look? for that purpose. Where do we look for our purpose? And this is important. I can't get excited about anything in the world. The, the, the only thing I can get excited about is looking through God's word and seeing things that are from the word, that are eternal, that are heavenly, that are on purpose, not accidental, but that are on purpose. We were created for a reason. And you can't find that in the world. You can only find that in the word. This is why the vast majority of people struggle. They're looking in all of the wrong places to find all of the right things. Most people, most people engage in worldly activities in order to satisfy their desire for purpose. And I say, wait a second, let's go to God's word and see what God's word has to say about us. They are opposite of us. The, the, the world's way of thinking is different than the word's way of thinking. We have to understand that as we begin because we got eight weeks. And I can't give you anything of our purpose from the world. It just doesn't exist because to them, we were here by accident. And we were created not for a reason or on purpose. It's just, we're just here. 
You know, one of the biggest places you see this is you see, you see that type of thinking. When I was in India, when I was in India, 2004, 5, something, when I was in India, they believe in something called reincarnation, which basically you die and you just come back as something else. So who knows? So you know what that, what that does to their perspective? You know how much they value life? They don't. They don't value life. And the reason they don't value life is because their perspective is that, well, if they die, they're just going to come back at something else and there's really no purpose for them. So what that has done is it has totally changed their world to mean something that if they come back as, a, <clears throat> as an animal or another person in a higher caste, it's just it's what it is. But we have to go to God's word and we say, we were created for a specific purpose. And that is a word-like result. So don't look in the world for your answers. Never look, never look in the world for your answers because you're not going to find them. You're going to find world type results. So you spend time around people, you spend time around people who are influenced by the word, and you're going to become like the majority of people you hang around. You will also be influenced by the word. And therefore, you'll find your purpose. Finding our purpose is very, very important. If it's not about, if we're not here forever, if, if there is no eternal life, then, then I'm quitting. I quit my job. What are we here for if it's not eternal? If we will not one day live with our Heavenly Father, what are we doing? What are we doing? If it's not real, if it doesn't, if, if, if we were just an accident, just by chance we're here from the smallest little amoeba that came from the, the smallest little particle from a big bang and it was no, and there was nothing. If there's nothing unique about us and, and if there's more planets like this amongst the 50 trillion that are in the, in the universe, then, then, uh, th then why are we here at church? But I promise you this, people have been piercing through the depths of the universe for a very long time. And they can't find anything that even resembles us. There is nothing even close. They can't even find water. Water is the most abundant thing on the planet. They can't even find that. And if they did find that, they would say, hey, there's, we could have life on another planet. Forget the temperature, forget the ozone and the protective, you know, and the food and the vegetation and, and your iPhone. Forget all that. You're just, you, just, you just can be out on another planet somewhere. You need 200 degrees, 1,000 degrees below zero. I mean, I don't know. When you look at the uniqueness of us in this little planet that's just placed perfectly, it has the right spin, it has the right protective ozone, the right distance from the sun, the right elements, the right everything, we're unique. And we were created for a purpose. And that purpose can only be found in what God says in his word. Beginning by, do you know for sure that you'll spend an eternity with God? Are we absolutely certain of that? Are you absolutely certain? Do you, do you believe it so much that you tell other people about it? Do you tell other people that you have a purpose? And this isn't self-help, though it helps the self. This isn't self-help talk. This is real. This is the real deal. You can know for sure God exists and you can spend an eternity with him. And you can find your purpose in life by looking in his word. And you know what the word says? The word says that we're all sinners and that we are all in need of a savior. We look at Jesus as a redeemer, not a reprover, though he does reprove. And he does reprove the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. We know that. But we look to him as something, as something different. He is our redeemer. He buys us. He purchases us, our soul. He, that's how he, he buys our soul. And how does he do that? He buys it on the cross of Calvary. He dies for our sin. Here we are with, here we are, and here's, our, here's all of our sin. And those of you who go to the graduation, I guarantee you'll see this tonight. I might even do this tonight. I don't know. 
We'll see. Anyway, here we are with all of our sin. The Bible says that God loves us and hates our sin. It's, it's a universal truth. Universal truth. We find that in his word. That's not what the world says. But that's what his word says. Here we are with our sin. The Bible says that God loves us and hates our sin. That's in the word, not in the world. There's a lot of people who think they can turn over a new leaf or get baptized or walk an aisle or give money or raise a hand or pray a prayer. That does not save you. You know, that's the world's antidote. That's what the world says. The world says, just be a good person. Now, I think you ought to be a good person. But you can be a really good person and you can't get, you're not going to go to heaven because of that. Being good is good, but being good isn't good enough to get you to heaven. You've got to be perfect. And that's found in the word, not in the world. The world says, the world says, why do bad things happen to good people? The word says, why do good things happen to bad people? Two different perspectives. It's about perspective. If you want to find your purpose, we have to find perspective. Here we are with our sin. The Bible says God loves us but hates our sin. The Bible says in order to go to heaven, the word says that in order to go to heaven, you have to be sinless. You have to be perfect. To the world, they say you can do that by work. The word says this, it's to the man that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. It says his faith is counted for righteousness. The world says it's your good works that's counted for righteousness. The word says it's your faith that's counted for righteousness. Two different, two different things. The world says you can work for it and you can earn it and somehow go to heaven. But God says that's not true. That's not true. The Bible says Jesus Christ came to this earth 2,000 years ago to die on the cross to pay for your sin. And he was buried and he rose again the third day proving that his payment, his death, remember, the wages of sin is death. Someone has to die for your sin. 2,000 years ago, it was Jesus who died. But if he would have died and stayed dead, he would have not been God. He had to come back from the grave. That's the purpose of the resurrection. He had to come back from the grave. And when he came back from the grave, he proved to the Heavenly Father that his payment of death was sufficient to pay for the wages of sin because he said the wages of sin was death. So 2,000 years ago, he died on the cross, was buried and rose again. And what the Bible says is not by works of righteousness which you are saved, but it says, for by grace are you saved through faith. Trusting, depending, relying upon Jesus Christ as your Savior. That's it. It's not about doing a good work. That's what the world says. The word says it's about God's work. Two different things. I pray that everybody here knows Christ as their Savior. I believe that we do. Now we have to just we have to propagate this message throughout the world. We've got to tell other people the exciting truth that Jesus died and that he is alive again.